Hi, I'm Joe Crabtree, and in this video, I want to talk about snare drum tuning. Um, what I'm essentially doing is an experiment. I just saw a video by a guy called Udo Masshoff, a German guy, German drummer who makes his own drums, and has a video called The Ultimate Drum Tuning Revolution. And last night, I pulled out my spare snare drum because the head on this thing looks like it may go soon, and my spare snare drum sounded like crap. Um, and I tried this method on it and it sounded pretty good. So I have a day off, I'm in the studio, um, I am going to test it on my snare drum and I'm going to let you hear how this sounds with the current tuning that I have where everything is even as much as possible and then I will retune it using Udo's method and we'll see how it sounds. Now I'll put links under the video to where you can see Udo explaining the whole method for tuning the snare drum and it literally you can tune a snare drum in like 30 seconds. It's really impressive. Um, and I also recommend checking out the whole video. I bought his video from Vimeo and um, he's got tips for tuning bass drums and toms. And rather than being focused on here's how you tune a drum to get it to sound good and just one way, he covers the whole spectrum of different sounds that you can get out of drums. And he's got some really good insights into that. So I highly recommend checking those out. To begin with, this is my six and a half by 14 uh, Ian Pace signature model snare by Pearl. And the reason I got this um, was because I was going for a kind of John Bonham snare sound. And this is, by all accounts, a knockoff of a Ludwig superphonic drum, which um, Bonham used to use. And for the band I play in Wishbone Ash, um, this is an appropriate drum. I used to use a Brady snare and things that were cranked right up. And I'd listened back to recordings of gigs and it didn't really fit in the music. And this one fits pretty good. So I have it tuned quite high, but it's a deep drum. And um, if I take the snares off, the pitch of the top head, you can hear they're all pretty much the same pitch. That's what it sounds like in the center. And if I play the drum with the snares on, well, off first. So that's what it sounds like picked up through the overheads and the close mic here and with the snares on. So that's the sound of the snare drum. I'm going to reference that when I watch this video back. Now I'm using on this tuna fish lug locks, which I've reviewed before, and these things are great. I tuned this snare drum once at the beginning of the last tour. So this head has probably done 40 gigs or something. And it used to be that I had to tune these lugs up throughout the set because as I'm playing rim shots, which I do most of the time, um, these lugs would kind of come loose. So these tuna fish have stopped that happening. So the bottom head in this method is really tight. He does four half turns on all of the tension rods on the bottom head once you've got the thing at biting point. So put the hoop on, put the tension rods in, get them all finger tight, and then um, four half turns or two full turns and work opposite. So this one, this one, and just work your way around the drum like that. And the top head, I'm gonna loosen this off. So all these should be pretty similar. And I'm gonna use this head that is uh, an Evans G2, because I believe that Bonham used to use um, a Remo Emperor, which is a two-ply head. So this is the Evans equivalent. Um, so I'm just gonna loosen all of the tension rods essentially to sort of finger tightness. So we'll, we'll start off. And then I can just compare this drum, tuning it in the new method with this exact same head. And you and I will be able to hear the comparison. Because this method is really great if it works, but if it doesn't sound as good as the way I had it before, then I'm obviously gonna stick with the way I had it before. So, like I say, I highly recommend that you watch Udo explain this. It is his method as far as I'm aware and it's great and I recommend his video. But now I've got this to pretty much, these are all just finger tight now. 
So what I'm going to do is, as per his method, put uh, one turn after biting tension. So one turn being one, two half turns, and after biting tension. So I'll get it to biting tension, and then I'll put my two half turns on. And I'm actually going to mark this as the 12 o'clock lug, so I know when I have done them all. So one, two, one, two, one, two. So the only thing that I was missing with Udo's video was hearing a comparison with a regularly tuned snare drum because he just had the um, snare drums tuned in with this method all the time and they sounded good. So we've got it there, one full turn on all lugs and then I'm adding an extra turn to this and I'm adding a half turn to the one o'clock and 11 o'clock lugs. And then I'm leaving these four and then I'm loosening these, these, this one by one and a half turns, which is pretty much all the way off to be honest. One, two, and then this one I'm loosening all the way. So this is pretty crazy. I'm gonna get wrinkles in there and then just bring it so that the wrinkles just about disappear. So that's all you do for his method. So I have no idea what this is gonna sound like until I hit it. When I did it on my spare snare drum last night, it sounded pretty awesome. Awesome is not a word I use very often. So whereas with a regular snare, you've got everything equal tension and you tune it up and you spend ages trying to tune the ring out of a snare drum and padding it and things like that. With this, we've essentially got the, the drum like this and the hoop is at an angle. So this is all tight up here and this is all loose. And in the middle, we have four lugs that you can use to change the sort of pitch of the drum. So let's hear how this sounds. That's pretty cool. That is a low sounding snare drum, but without, it's, it's got tension so you can play rolls and things. So then what I'm gonna do is use these four tension rods. I'm gonna add, say, a quarter of a turn on each of those to bring up the pitch of the drum, but hopefully still keep that dryness. Okay, so let's say we want to bring it up some more. I'm improvising now because he says in his video you can control the overall um, pitch of the drum with these two, but I want it higher, so I'm gonna actually add another quarter turn up here and an eighth of a turn to those to bring those up a little bit. And then add some more to these, just a little bit. So basically I'm adding tension to this side of the drum. See how that sounds. This sounds really good to me. Let's try it without the snares. Okay, that's good. I can see wrinkles forming down here. Um, these probably are loosening off more. Um, or in fact, you know, this one could, that's got tension on it, so that could come down some more. As you put tension on up here, it pulls the head so that you get more tension down here also. Okay, that to me sounds great. 
the really cool thing of this method is your overtones are controlled by these lugs down here. Now there's wrinkles on this, but it still feels nice to play as a snare drum. So in theory, if you want the kind of ringy reggae snare drum sound, you just bring your overtones back in with these three tension rods. So let's add sort of two full turns there, some there, and some there. And now we have a high pitched ringy snare drum. So you have full control of overtones, pitch, and the feel of the drum with just a few looks. So this is, is revolutionary for me. I've never seen anything like it, and I think it sounds great. But definitely go and check out Udo's video. Um, thanks, Udo, for coming up with such a cool method.